In this video, we'll take a look at using PXT General to control other software and also to add more flexibility to user mode in live. First, we'll take a look at extending the functionality of user mode in live. In case you're not aware, you can switch to user mode with the user button. All of the controls that aren't used by PXT General can be customized. You can do these customizations with the user assignments editor. In this editor, all of the controls on the gray background are referred to as global controls and these can be edited by just clicking on the control. When editing buttons, you'll first select the type. There's three types available, CCs, Notes, and MCU button, which we'll come back to in a little bit. In this case, I'll select Note. The Note and CC types offer the same settings. You could set the MIDI channel of the button. You could set the button's Note or CC number. You could set the button's action type, whether it's momentary or toggle. And you could set the button's LED control to either internal, so the button's LED will be controlled by you pressing it, or external, where the button's LED will be controlled by the software you're using. Here I'll select external because the parameter I'm going to be controlling sends feedback. I'll map this button to the mute switches of my return tracks. Now you can't see it very well in this video, but the LED state is being updated according to the mute state of these tracks. As another example, I'm going to set up the in and out button so they can be used for controlling punch in and out in live. Now punch in and out don't send feedback, so here I'm going to leave the LED state to internal. When editing encoders, you first select the type. There's three types available. Relative, which sends increase-decrease values. Absolute, which sends values in the range of 0 through 127. And MCU encoder, which we'll come back to in a little bit. The relative and absolute types offer the same settings. You can set the encoder's MIDI channel and you could set its CC number. For this example, I'll map this encoder to global quantization. The upper controls shown on the white background in the editor have default assignments in PXT General, but they also have editable assignments, which you can access by pressing the scales button. These controls can have six sets of assignments. You can switch between those in the editor with the move buttons, or from the controller with the encoder mode buttons. The settings available for the encoders are the same as the settings that we saw with global encoders. The settings for the buttons are mostly the same as what we saw with global buttons, except you can also select an LED on and LED off value. You can edit settings for all the controls in a group by clicking edit all. In this case, I'll set the LED control to external for all these buttons. You can also edit the information that's shown in the display. For each display line, you can choose to have it display custom text or the values of the encoders. For the first display line, I'll enter some custom text. This will be used to indicate the parameters that the encoders are controlling. For the second display line, I'll choose encoder values. This way I can see the values of the encoders. For the bottom two display lines, I entered some custom text to indicate the parameters that the buttons are controlling. I also added some assignments in the second mode, which you can see here. In my live set, I've got four tracks, each with an instance of auto filter, and I've mapped these assignments accordingly. PXT General also provides Mackie Control Universal, or MCU, emulation. In case you're not familiar with the MCU, it's a very powerful and flexible control surface that's supported in a variety of software. By providing emulation, we're able to trick software into thinking that Push is an actual MCU. In this way, we can achieve deep levels of control over any software that supports the MCU. The upper controls have a fixed MCU option. When this is enabled, the encoders and buttons will perform MCU functions and the display will show MCU related information. As we saw before, global buttons have an MCU button type. When this is selected, you can choose the MCU function that the button should perform. Likewise, global encoders have an MCU encoder option. Here I've set up some basic MCU assignments and I'll show you how these work in FL Studio. I can control basic transport and also control mixer settings such as panning and stereo spread. Can also select tracks and mute tracks, and also arm and solo tracks. I can also navigate different parts of the application, such as the browser or the channels or even menus. We can also control views as well as navigate around in views. The track selection and track state buttons can also send keystrokes, keystroke combinations, or keyboard macros. These can be edited in the macro editor. Each of these buttons can have two different macro assignments, a default assignment 
and a shifted assignment that you access when the shift button is pressed. For each assignment, you can specify the name. This is the name that will be shown in the display. You can specify the button's color, and then you can learn the macro that the button should send. You do this by activating learning and then pressing the keys that you want the button to send. In this case, I'll have this button just send one key, the up keystroke. To set up a multi-step macro, you just enable learning and then press the key or combination of keys that you want each step in the macro to send. You can access the macros you set up with the repeat button. Holding the repeat button down will give you momentary access to the macros. Pressing it quickly will toggle macros on or off. I've set up a few macros here for use with Live. These allow me to access and navigate the browser, as well as load clips onto the track that's selected. 